Okay. Good. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, let me start by uh, thanking uh, Kiwun and all the organizers of this uh, conference, which has been very, very interesting and very well organized. And it's a pleasure to be here. And also to see that the level of uh, science and the, sense of the different institutions here are so high, which is, uh, is good to see for the, for the future of uh, science in Korea, which looks very good. Um, <coughs> but so I will talk about the cosmology of the string model, eh? And uh, in principle, I will talk about three papers. The two ones I, I was planning to talk about, which was uh, something that came out last year, oscillons from string moduli, and a more recent one the, in the June, um, moduli stars. But recently, I got involved with these uh, issues about quintessence and the Sunblant, and that there will be a paper appearing today. I was checking, and it hasn't appeared yet, but the, the number will, <laughs> so will appear today. So I will talk about this, because this is the subject of conversation in many of the, of the uh, informal talks here. So, Marco, you don't mind if you stop me around 10 minutes before, so I can have time to, to take yeah. OK, so let me start. So this, this, I will go one by one. <coughs> So a short review, because it's, uh, we, we have a, a different audience uh, here, a uh, mixed audience. So in general, a string theory predicts one of the things that we can actually say for sure is that string tends to be if in, in extra dimensions, six or seven extra dimensions. And it has been a major problem over uh, many, many years, is to fix the size of extra dimensions. In the times of Kaluza and Klein, when they uh, propose the uh, one extra dimension to, to explain why this extra dimension has a, uh, is smaller compared to our, our dimensions has always been a challenge. And it's only this century that it has been really uh, approached with, with the fluxes and modular for, for to fix the modular, the size, the modular, the size and the shape of these extra dimensions. And there are several scenarios that came out starting from 2000, 2002. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, then uh, uh, th that has allowed us to start exploring cons concrete consequences from uh, fr from a string theory because before that uh, you don't fix the the extra the size of the extra dimensions you don't know uh, how to do uh, the calculations because at the end of the day all these moduli uh, will be flat directions in, in four dimensions they will create these many problems for uh, fit forces and so on and it will be inconsistent with any experiment and. Uh, <coughs> so, from both sizes, it was important to fix, and it's only at this time that people started working. Uh, at that time, precisely, the idea of having uh, uh, the, the acceleration of the universe came out, uh, and then we had some of the solutions had the sitter uh, space as a solution, with us, that means the positive cosmological constant, and that, uh, that has been very much debated recently, so I will discuss it later on. So, moduli in general are scalar fields in four dimensions, and so they are good candidates for inflatons. That's, that's one of the good things. They have a usually gravitational strength couplings, so in that sense, that would be very difficult to detect in uh, uh, experiments here. The mass of the model is usually the gravitational mass, and, uh, uh, and the gravitational mass me measures how, for how much supersymmetry has been broken, and uh, that is not well known how, how big it can be. It can be from TeV above. And each modulus actually is a complex field. It has an, a real and imaginary part. So uh, w w the real part is kind of an action, and the imaginary part an action. So it's always they come together. We have to consider them together. And the number of modulus there are many, and you saw that depends on, on how complicated this manifold is, and it can be between uh, the other hundreds or thousands of them. So that's a that, that's rough rough number. So to stabilize the moduli, uh, people have been uh, using just uh, there are three types of moduli. I, for this discussion, I will concentrate on one particular string theory, which is called type 2b. And there are many reasons to discuss type 2b and not the other ones, and I will mention them later. Uh, it's the one that we can do calculations. It's not that it's better than the other ones, but it's the one that we can do the calculations. And uh, at the end, we have... Uh, uh, Three types of moduli: the dilaton, which is the 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 the, the, the modulus of uh, the the that measures the string coupling, is still is, is existing in ten dimensions already. 
the sizes of the four cycles inside the six-dimensional manifold and the sizes of the three cycles. And they have labels I and A because they, they are the ones that can run into the hundreds. And the defective field theory is a standard supergravity theory, which has this uh, scalar potential. Uh, and then the, the progress that was made is that you can you have a superpotential which is non-trivial, the superpotential generated by fluxes around the different cycles, and uh, and that is a function only of the U fields and the S fields. The T fields are special somehow because they have a Peche Queen symmetry, a shift symmetry that people have been talking about about during the conference. And uh, so, being the, holomorph the superpotential holomorphic, it cannot depend on on the real part nor imaginary part of T. So, so at three level and in all orders in perturbation theory, the superpotential depends on U and S, but not on T. And then once you plug it into the standard supergravity potential, you, you get a potential <coughs> that happens to be positive definite, because also the, the T fields satisfy one particular property, which is called the no scale, uh, which is the K inverse KK equals to three, so this three is cancelled. And uh, then the potential is positive definite, so the minimum is when each of these quantities are zero, and that fixes the the fields S and U, but not T. And uh, since they are zero, the potential is zero, at, and that's a tree level. Then there will be quantum corrections. And I will go slightly uh, in detail here, because this will play a role in, at the end of my talk. Uh, the quantum corrections are important, because since the potential is zero at tree level, so the leading order quantum correction will be the ones that dominant for, for for fixing this uh, fields T. And uh, since so the basic quantities are the killer potential and the superpotential, the, you can estimate the, the variation of the, of the scalar potential is so the order of W0 squared delta K, K plus W0 times delta W. So this is the variation of the superpotential, the variation of the killer potential. And uh, <coughs> so this brings you to three different options. One is that the standard one, the, the tree level, is bigger than the, than the corrections. The corrections for the superpotential are always non-perturbative, so they are very small. And, and the corrections to delta k are perturbative, so they're also bigger than delta w, just usually. So in this case, only this term dominates, and that will go, that delta k goes like one over the volume, so that will give you runaway behavior. And that's the standard problem that people call the dine saber problem that came out in the 1980s, the saying that it will be very difficult to stabilize the model because they, they tend to run away. Uh, but there are two other options that have been explored in, in, in the last uh, 15 years or so. Is, uh, one is that the uh, KKLT is the famous uh, KLT scenario in which uh, you have, you use the fact that this flux is superpotential. Is, there's so many options that you can tune essentially this W0 in a way that W0 can be very, very small by tuning the different uh, fluxes because there are hundreds of them. And you can make it at the same order as the delta W, or the non-perturbative one. And in that case, uh, since that W0 is very small, you can, <coughs> this term dominates over this one, you can neglect that one, and then, the, but there will be a delta W square corrections, and the delta W square compete with this one, because W0 is the offered same order delta W, and that gives you a minimum, and that's what the standard KKLT scenario is. And uh, then, but then there's the other solution, is make these two terms compete with each other, and that's the large volume scenario. In that sense that the, the, per, the corrections to delta W is non-perturbative, the corrections to, to the carrier potential are perturbative. So typically they go like one over the volume, whereas the, the, the delta W goes like exponential of one of the moduli. If there's only one modulus, tau and volume are, is, are essentially the same. And then the, it would be impossible for these two terms to compete. But uh, the good property of string theory is that there are hundreds of these, so you can compute this, the volume, overall volume with one of the small moduli. And so this term competes with that one, so these two terms compete with each other. And since <coughs> that will give you that this delta k is of order delta w, so one over the volume is equal to e to the minus a tau, so the volume is exponentially large. So that's the reason for to have large volume, that's the name. So the sense that these are the two scenarios that came out and that people have been exploring over the past years. So, as I told you, now we have stabilized the model, and then there will be ways to lift and have them, some of the minima are the sitter and some of the minima are anti-the-sitter. And uh, so then, then you can play with that and get 
uh, inflation. I will go quickly with this because this is not the talk of the main point of my talk. You have to keep in track uh, in, in mind that you have to keep the hierarchies to work. The Planck scale has to be bigger than the string scale, than bigger than the Kaluza client, and bigger than inflation. That puts a strong constraints on what kind of inflation you, uh, you can get. And uh, that's, one, that's one of the main reasons that it's hard to get uh, very high uh, uh, scale inflation. And, uh, <coughs> and then you have three epochs, pre-inflation, inflation, and post-inflation. Pre-inflation, we have usually nothing to say, unfortunately. Inflation, then we can start using this effective theory approach to, to get inflation. And then what I will concentrate mostly today is in post-inflation. The interesting thing is that uh, usually people say inflation is good because it, it uh, erases everything that came out before, but also it's bad because it erases everything that came out before because then you may not see uh, any, any signatures of what happened before uh, inflation. However, the moduli again are the things that survive after inflation because they are light. They, they, are, they are light fields, so even after inflation happens, <coughs> they survive and they, they have, as I say, mass of the other of the supersymmetry breaking scale, so they, they can play a role after inflation. Just to give you a taste of the moduli, one is the overall volume, the size. The other ones we call blow up moduli, which are uh, like in Swiss cheese, are small s cycles that when they get bigger, the volume gets smaller, which is. And then there are other ones like a fiber model, like when you could locally, it is like a product space. And each of them have different uh, uh, structure and then the potentials can be different and they can all be candidates for inflation. And then there are uh, con concrete inflationary models that give you NS and R in the, in the, in the potentially observable regime, which is here. Okay, post-inflation. The most important thing that happens post-inflation is that these fields, whatever happens to, to to inflation, these fields are uh, the moduli, being inflatons or not, they can, at the end of inflation, whoever the, infl uh, the inflaton is, the, these fields, uh, they are stuck in, in some place which is not its minimum, and then will start oscillating. And when it's so late, it behaves like matter and then dominate the energy density of the universe. And it's only after they finish oscillating and, and decay, that's the real reheating. So reheating is not after inflation, but it's after this field decay. And it can be much later than the inflation part. That puts a strong constraint on the masses of this field, which is uh, heavier than uh, 30 TeV or so. That used to be called the cosmological modular problem. But since the fact that we haven't discovered supersymmetry, 30 TeV is not a big deal. <laughs> so now we call that do modular domination period. So it's a period with modular dominate the energy density of the universe, depending on the mass. Okay. So uh, th then let me just talk about the uh, oscillons. That's the, the first uh, paper, oscillons from stream modular. So oscillons, in principle, they are localized, long lived, nonlinear excitations of the scalar fields <coughs> that people have been studying over the years. So the generality is that we just have a field uh, here. At some point, you start oscillating, and you have to solve the corresponding equation uh, uh, for for the field in, in, in the Freeman Rosen working background, and then the perturbations. And the perturbations have this term here that can become uh, negative. So in that sense, it will become uh, say tachyonic, and they can give rise to uh, uh, growth of inhomogeneities. So you can have unstable solutions. There are several. Uh, effects, the parametric resonance, when that one of the modes has a, a coincide with the resonance, of the, the natural resonance of, of the corresponding field. The tachyonic preheating, that means that uh, above the here, the, the, there is here there is an inflection point, above here there is a, like a tachyonic behavior because it's, uh, this quantity is negative, and that can give right to, to, to inhomogeneities. Uh, uh, yes. And then uh, tachyonic oscillations, the field can start oscillating, and once it passes, every time it passes the, the inflection point, it will behave tachyonic, and then that will, that will, that will create inhomogeneities. So that, uh, to, that's, that's what uh, this oscillons at the end shell will be produced. Uh, <coughs> so there are necessary conditions for oscillon productions. Uh, uh, quantum fluctuations of the field grow as it oscillates around the minimum. The growth of fluctuations is sufficiently strong for nonlinear interactions to become important. And the potential, this is important part, the potential is shallower than quadratic. So you have the quadratic piece minus something. This is typical for actions, for instance. <coughs> you have this uh, minus sign. And uh, so then you can have a, 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 an attractive force. And that's what when you have, uh, uh, that can be the, 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 the effect that, that, that uh, compensates for the pressure and stabilizes the, 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 the object. 
And uh, so in order to explore that, we have to do lattice simulations to solve the equations, and, uh, <coughs> and also include the metric perturbations. And for that, uh, we take the KKLT part, the, the case, this is the potential. You have to go to the canonical normalized field. And, uh, and then you see the, the, the inflection point here, which is the, the critical quantity. And then see uh, if you have enough oscillations <coughs> and that they can grow, that the, the perturbations can grow or not. Uh, so for different values of the flux superpotential, remember it has to be very small for the solutions to exist. For 10 to the minus 12, for 10 to the minus 5, the inhomogeneities grow, but not enough. In this case, not enough to produce oscillons. But in this case, when their W0 is smaller enough, that you can produce uh, oscillons. And, uh, but the main effect here is, is parametric resonance. <coughs> you can see the field oscillating <coughs> around the, the inflection point, uh, around the minimum. And so, but uh, you don't have uh, um, enough. While it, while it is oscillating here, it do, the oscillation, don't, the, the per perturbation don't grow enough. So it's, 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 it's only after, after here. So then you can see the snapshots. You can see a movie, you can see, follow our paper, but you can see some snapshots of how these inhomogeneities are created, and you can see the, how they are coming up. Also, they don't come out uh, spherical as usual, as, as expected. So in that sense, you can see them to be a source for gravitational waves. And you can see the gravitational waves spectrum. Uh, so for, for different, uh, here for different times, you can see that they, they have a very, very well uh, defined spectrum for, for these oscillons. And, but unfortunately, the frequencies are very high with the corresponding amplitude. We can reduce the, fre the, uh, the frequencies, however, at the expenses of reducing also the amplitude. So it's something we have to, thank you. Okay, um, for the blow up modes, the one that I was showing to you with the Swiss uh, cheese uh, shape, uh, actually you do get uh, tachyonic uh, oscillations enough to make the, the to increase this is a much more dramatic behavior the same kind of uh, shape but the, the actually the, the slope is such that it's much more dramatic so you can actually pr produce this uh, growth of perturbations and here you can have the, this uh, tachyonic oscillations giving you rise to the to oscillons and in this case you can see uh, the real how this field that this this uh, configurations are being created and uh, the amplitudes again the uh, they are, uh, the, the gravitational waves produced are uh, uh, bigger amplitudes. So, so I'm a little bit behind with time because this is my second, so let me just go fast. Now modular stars. So having studied uh, this configuration of oscillons, they have been stabilized by the structure of the interactions. However, gravity is there, and gravity can also play a role to stabilize the subjects. And uh, so for that, we remind that the fact that there are uh, Fermion stars, we have gravity uh, compensating the fermion pressure, and you get an object which is, has a maximum mass proportional to the n Planck's cube or n square of the mass of the fermion. For a um, uh, mass of uh, 1 GeV, you get a solar mass, and that's the standard neutron star. And for, for boson stars, there's a huge literature starting in the 60s, ideas of uh, Wheeler and many others uh, later on. And uh, that actually is, you, have, uh, you can argue, uh, from that you can have the Schwarz cell radius competing with. Um, with the uh, Heisenberg principle, the uncertainty of, of, of the radius, or proportional 1 over m. So you get objects with a maximal mass, not n plan q or m square, but n plan square or m. And so for a given mass, this is much, uh, uh, mean, a given mass of the field, this is a, a, a much lighter uh, object. And people had argued that can be interactions, and most of the literature in boson stars are saying that you have big interactions that can raise you the mass to the similar level of the fermion stars. However, in string theory, we don't find them. We only find things of this type. And so the bosonic compiled objects, you can have cue balls and oscillons, which are repulsive pressure against attractive interaction. You don't need gravity. And the cue balls uh, are like, like uh, non-topological solitons. But then you have gravity as repulsive source pressure, like uh, we have boson stars, mini boson stars with the masses that but I told you, then oscillatons for which the action stars are there. So it's a source of jargons. I, th I, th I think uh, David Marsh mentioned that mini clusters also uh, in, in his talk. Uh, so are there stringy boson or fermion stars? And they're the candidates, so the, the modula, the modulini, the gravitini. <coughs> These are the fermion stars, and this could be candidates for boson stars. 
And for fermion star, the standard possibility for the gravity on the modulus, of course, if they are stable and they can be, or quasi-stable and can be dark matter, that can be object that survives now, but if they decay, still they are objects that play some role in the history of the universe. And for that, you can compute the, the corresponding masses. You, the volume cannot be arbitrary, so it has this range of values, so then you can have different masses and sizes of these objects. You can have uh, this thing, something of the size of a nucleus with the, uh, as heavy as the Mount Everest or so. And then the the volume model can, can also uh, be a start, then we can solve the equations with the, <coughs> the, the, the Einstein-Klein-Gordon equations on the field uh, with an oscillation oscillating uh, part of the... Uh, uh, you can see how, how the, the profile is such that uh, it's uh, more or less localized here, and this is the evolution of the gravitational interactions. And you can find solutions for both KKLT and LVS. Uh, then you can look for cue balls in string theory, and you can find them in the open strings. As it's an uh, old work by Kusenko for the MSM, directly applies to string theory, so you can have open string modes giving you, giving you rise to cue balls. But the closed string sector, uh, you can also uh, get them in several ways. Either when you have modular in actions, the action being much lighter. It's one of the pr uh, general predictions of the string um, uh, of the large volume scenarios that the corresponding um, action partner of the of the volume has a mass which is extremely small because the volume is exponentially large, so it's e to the minus something that is exponentially large. So it's doubly exponentially small, so this is essentially zero, and that's a good candidate for an ultralight action. So usually people talk about ultralight actions, and uh, and then. Uh, <coughs> In this scenario, they, are, they come out very natural because the corresponding field is already stabilized and is heavier, but the action is essentially, essentially massless. It can be one of the exponential large. Uh, unfortunately, I'm running out of time, so I'll skip this. Just to give you a, a general picture, we can have a, a, the states, the corresponding field, the corresponding star, just so there's a duality of uh, one over the volume going to the volume, and everything depending on the volume. You give the volume and you get the whole spectrum of the subject that you can get and the spectrum of masses that you can get from uh, different uh, sizes and, 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 uh, and mass to relatively small to extremely big. It's just given by, by this action that I told you. Okay, the Sitter versus quintessence. So this is uh, the source of debate. So I will spend three minutes on that, or five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, there have always been challenges about getting the sitter. Uh, you have the, the, how to define an matrix in the sitter space. People would say, well, it's just a resonance or it's a metastable case. There are classical novel theories about getting the sitter in, in string theory. That's not a big issue because we know that atoms are unstable classically, so in that sense, that's not a problem. However, uh, in his, but the argument has been used recently, which I think is, is very is good to take into account, is that there are no the sitter solutions on string theory under full calculation and control. So the, the cases I told you, KKLT, LVS, and so on, they're very interesting. They has a lot of uh, considerations, but they're not on the full calculation and control. And that's a fair statement. However, jumping to that and say that there's, they're totally not under control is not fair neither. So you have to, it's not under full calculation and control, but they're... <coughs> and so there have been a couple of uh, three uh, 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 um, studies in the recent years to criticize some of the steps of the of this KKLT and large volume scenarios. If the, the flux is under control, only if you have supersymmetry, you have uh, you have full control. Otherwise, you don't. The tuning of W zero is not just achieved. People say that there are good arguments to see, but it's not seen in the concrete models because it's very complicated. Uh, what about higher order corrections that can uh, change the, 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 the large volume limit? Uh, you saw that since the volume is very large, it gets better, then the approximation gets better and better, but we cannot just say 100% sure that everything is under full control. Uh, and, and, and there was some criticism for anti-brains that, that create some singularities. It also they introduced by hand and they're not super symmetric. However, this has been debated and discussed and the, uh, in the last few years, people say that they have agreed that there's not an issue there, and uh, and so on. So, so then there's the Swamland conjectures. Um, <coughs> the Swamland idea, I think, is very good. The the idea is that effective field theories, not every single effective field theory can be uh, derived from a theory of gravity, 
and I think Matthew Rees would talk about them, that the weak gravity conjecture and the distance conjecture they have been very much extracting people information that <coughs> not everything that you can see at low energies is actually uh, achievable in quantum gravity, and that's a good way to distinguish what things you can actually get from, from a string theory or quantum gravity. But then there's this recent one. The recent one is uh, very strong. Based on these arguments that uh, the calculations are not under full control to get the sitter, so, obviate at all, uh, conjecture that you will never get the sitter. Essentially, that there is a bound that the gradient of the potential is lower, but the potential, potential is greater than, than a positive constant, the further one. And so, essentially, it will imply quintessence because then the fields have to roll, and uh, not the sitter. But also, it will be very difficult to get uh, inflation because this is. Uh, uh, that, will, that, that will be uh, one of the slow roll conditions will be broken. So this has been the source of a lot of debate in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, so let me just say that the, still the city uh, has many achievements. It's remarkable that uh, people have been obtaining that. So there was, we don't have understanding of string theory. We don't have a full number of understanding of string theory. And yet we have been able to extract all this information that I told you before and under very stringy things from brains, orientifolds, anti-brains, perturbative and non-perturbative of X, and so on. Uh, <coughs> the, then this to be theory, the ball space is well understood, and people has, have a, a, co a control, and so on. And then there's a control of the hierarchies. There's all the scales are under control. The calusa klein scale is more than a string scale, and so on. So you can separate different uh, scales. OK. One minute, sorry. Uh, <coughs> so. Uh, now, there are challenges for this new conjecture. There are two challenges that have been already raised in the literature we have explored. One is that if, if a gradient, uh, small, uh, if the gradient has to be bigger than some quantity, what about the, the Higgs potential itself? The Higgs potential, you have a maximum at h equal to zero. So that's the gradient is zero. So then the direction of quintessence would have to, it would not compete with this uh, height of the TV of, of the Higgs. So you have to find ways to make that quintessence consistent with the Higgs. And that's challenging, which uh, we have approach. Also, the, the potential, if it has, uh, goes to zero from above, you have to come out down. And then even supersymmetric, uh, you forbid non -super uh, the city, you can also forbid some ADS supersymmetric. And uh, so in both cases, you can, uh, you can this can be addressed if you just modify the conjecture to still allow subtle points for a bit minima, but not but subtle points. But there's, I would say, no real concrete uh, reason why to impose this. And so then the, you ask the question, and this is my last point, sorry, is can you get quintessence from a string theory? And the challenges are the same as getting the sitter plus more, plus getting this uh, slow roll. You have to get all model stabilized plus one of them rolling. So in that sense, whatever is difficult to get in the sitter, it makes it even more difficult to get uh, quintessence. And yet we have to address this. this uh, and then people have studied quintessence candidates uh, using this uh, uh, model like that I told you, or, or inflatons. Actually, our main organizer, Kiwun, has been one of the main leaders in, in the using this action as about quintessence. And this is the last point I will emphasize today, and this I will finish. Uh, as I told you, we have many moduli, each modulus has an action, and the potential for the actions, if you have these ultralight ones, at the end you can integrate everybody out except for the actions, and then the potential will look like this. Notice that I put different constants here and there. People usually put here one minus cosine because assume that the minimum is at zero. That you cannot get in a string theory. It's totally unnatural. So in this place, these two things are different. And then you, can, you have to compute the, or, the, the source of this term is completely different from the source of this term. So they don't have to, to, to be. So you can play with the relative values of them. And uh, the, the condition to get a quintessence is that epsilon is smaller than one. And uh, so usually this is used to imply that FL is bigger than M Planck. But here is not necessarily because it, rep it depends on the ratios of these two lambdas. And uh, so then we have different uh, possibilities of getting quintessence depending on how the field is. You have a, a very close to the hilltop. Uh, at the, if, if, the, if the constant term is much bigger than the, the running, or if it is the field is oscillating, that will give you a very interesting equation of state which is uh, fluctuating. So conclusions. <laughs> uh, so there are concrete models of inflation for string theory, which is good. Uh, but inflation is only one component of the cosmology. Post-inflation is very important. I, I explored several things. Uh, things for dark matter, dark energy, the, uh, this dark radiation, actually. These uh, light actions are typical cases, for example, for dark radiations. And uh, 
then there's a rich spectrum of compact objects, oscillons, gravitini, gravitini, modulini, modular action, and stars, that uh, can, can have some signature, in particular gravitational wave signatures. I like to say that, that eventually, you, in the long future, we can hear the shape of the extra dimensions, but you see in this uh, gravitational wave spectrum for each modulus will give you some different patterns. And the Sitter versus Quintessence, there are many achievements, which is good. There are many challenges, which is also good. There are many open questions, which makes the field more, much more exciting. And I would like to say, end with this comment of uh, Mark Twain. So the report of my death was an exaggeration. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Of course, the <coughs> dark matter and dark shone, those kinds of things may be contained in the string theory. But my question is a bit general. <coughs> The string theory, or maybe moduli, had something to say about uh, cosmo cosmological constant problem, or is it outside of the string theory? No, no, no. That's a very good. That's precisely the point of my uh, of this. So you have all these uh, many solutions. So you have all these fluxes. So actually, if I would say this is the only uh, concrete solution of the cosmological constant, even though people don't like it, which is precisely that. You have all these uh, hundreds or thousands of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of uh, fields, uh, of fluxes of fields, they have all this combination of integers that will give you a huge amount of minima. And uh, how many minima is many, say, as people say, 10 to the hundreds or so, or more than to the thousands. And then that, that addresses, you know, this is the, the anthropic argument for, for addressing the cosmological constant. So this is the, the only concrete way to do it. So this, this uh, um, um, tuning that I was telling you about, uh, for instance, getting the lambda here in the last uh, slides about the action potential is, is precisely the tuning of the cosmological constant. And the rest we, we are talking about, there are just small fluctuations around that. So, so that's why this issue has been, is very, uh, debated because it is the, the the basis of that is addressing the cosmological constant problem, and uh, and, and and that's how it's it's important to have it under as much control as possible, and it's not yet under full control. So we cannot claim it's under full control because we haven't uh, uh, found cases where you have hun the hundreds of models like giving you this W zero very small, for instance, or 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 or, or, or the tuning to be possible. And also how to populate the vacuum, how to go the, the, the landscape, how to go from one minimum to another one is not yet on the full control. Okay. Next question. Okay, you mentioned this uh, action like quintessence, but on the other hand, uh, because action is a compact field, you necessarily has the uh, digital like maximum. So what then might be in conflict with this digital swamp and contract. Absolutely. What, what, what is your, your opinion on that? Very good, exactly. So thank you for asking. It's, uh, the three, uh, let me see the, the, yes, each of this, for instance here, you have to be very close to the maximum, and uh, this conjecture in principle is forbidding the, uh, the the maximum. But you say, well, let's let's now use the modified conjecture, where they are they ac they accept saddle points and not uh, minima. So then this could be consistent with both. It's very bad. It's very tuned. But these two you cannot. These two uh, the, the, uh, they both have to have a minimum. As you said, it's, it's a compact, you have to have a minimum. And in both cases, the minimum is at positive cosmological constant. You can have quintessence also on top of that. But uh, in these cases, you have a minimum, which is the sitter. So you can have quintessence and the sitter together. <laughs> but uh, the, the Sorry. The Sorry, let's keep it brief because okay, we are okay. already... So basically, you, assume the, uh, you take this modified version of the digital swamp and conjecture, which allows the... Uh, the uh, unstable the maximum. Cycle. Yes, if they, they agree. With it. Yes. So one final question over there. Uh, so you show that, that the relation between the size and the mass of compact objects, right? Then the, I'm wondering if it can be uh, ultra compact. So I mean, the, it can be the Schwarzschild radius. Yes. What comparable? Okay. Yes, 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 okay. exactly. Yes, Thank you exactly. Very much. Yeah. So what we're giving is a maximum maximum mass and yes. 
Okay, let's thank Fernando and all the speakers of this morning.